Hello everyone, welcome back to Force Galaxy. Hope you are doing good. So today in this video, I'm going to share one Salesforce interview with you. So this is of one plus year experience Salesforce developer interview. Okay. So if you have any questions related to, uh, if you have any doubts related to any question, do let me know in the comment section. Okay. I will share the answer with you over the comments itself. Okay. Now let's start with the video and. I'm good. How are you? I'm good too. Thank you. So how do we use to pass data from HTML to JS controller in web components? HTML to JS? Yeah. We can directly uh, fetch uh, from by using a component.get. Uh, I'm not getting your question. Uh, from HTML to JS? Uh, if like suppose there is a component, okay. On a screen there is an input field. Okay. If I have entered there something like hello. How are okay. you? So I want to now pass this value to my JS controller. So, so okay. Yeah. Uh, we can uh, get it uh, with the help of event. With the help of events, like. Yeah. Uh, like uh, we can create uh, on input field. We can uh, mention any uh, event like on click, on change, etc. Mm -hmm. And in JS, we can get it uh, with the method name and uh, in parameters we can use event. Uh, Okay, and how we used to bind the data in LWC? If there is any variable which we need to bind over this HTML so that the change value it can show the value which is changed in the JS controller can be uh, refreshed over this UI or on the HTML. Uh, with the help of decorators like uh, ABI? Yeah, yeah, decorator is there. Okay. Yeah. So now if uh, any of the variable or the property I have used on the HTML, so how do we write this on HTML? The name or anything else also used there? Uh, with curly braces, uh, we, we will use property name. Okay. And how do we pass the data from child to parent? Child to parent. Yeah. Uh, with the help of events, uh, we can create custom event uh, and we can dispatch from uh, child to parent. And uh, we can get uh, uh, the fired event from child to uh, in the parent component uh, by using own uh, and method name. And have you used promise and promise all in your JS? Uh, I have used uh, once uh, uh, where my result was coming. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, I was taking some time. Mm -hmm. At that time, I, I had used promise method to handle uh, this uh, time period. To handle the time period? Yeah. Okay. So, why you are facing this delay in your response? Uh, it was an API callout actually. Uh, so, uh, the result of, uh, we were getting in uh, uh, our callback uh, that was uh, coming late in JS. Okay. So, uh, can you tell me the execution order we have in our web components? Uh, life cycle of yes. LWC. Yes. Yeah. So, first of all, when a LWC component uh, comes into web browser, uh, first of all, its a constructor uh, get called, uh, and in constructor, first of all, a super method is to be executed. And once uh, super method, once constructor uh, is got executed and uh, component uh, came into the DOM, uh, then the first of all uh, connected callback is to be executed. And after connected callback, uh, com uh, LWC component choose which template uh, it have to load. Uh, as we know, uh, there may be more than one HTML template in the LWC. So uh, LWC decide which template it has to. Uh, open and then uh, and then hold the process uh, and if template contain any child component then the whole uh, LWC component get uh, then the whole LWC process is to be executed for, for the child component and at last uh, rendered callback is to be done and at the time of uh, dispatching the uh, LWC component from the DOM disconnected callback is to be. So like suppose in a component, in web component, uh, we have a connected callback there, okay? And a wire function is there, okay? okay? Now in this wire, we have called our uh, Apex method and we are getting the response from Apex method, okay? Now when my component loads, so what 
you will see which will going to load for uh, which will going to execute first the connected callback or the wire okay i'm not sure about it uh, as i'm not implement something like this but okay. I, i i think uh, first of all uh, connected callback will be executed as per the life cycle so why you we use this keyword in our uh, this web components when we are uh, accessing any variable of com web component this keyword yeah uh, to reference it uh, that we are using the uh, variable of same class okay so can we call a lwc component from another lwc yeah we can and from aura from aura uh, yes we can call and from vf pages vf page yes we can how uh, i i don't remember with the help of uh, lightning app lightning app in so is it possible is it possible to directly call lwc component from the vf pages i am not sure about it uh, once i had implemented with the help of lightning app and in lightning app i had called lwc component and this, this lightning uh, app you have called in your web or vf pages right yeah. okay and how do we communicate between uh, unrelated components in web uh Uh, do you mean two independent uh, yeah. components? Yes. Uh, we can use uh, either PubSub or Lightning messaging service. Anything more you can describe in this? How the flow will going to in this PubSub? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, have you ever implemented this? Yes, I have implemented this. Uh, as I can remember, first of all, uh, there are two um, things here. One is publisher and one is subscri subscriber mm -hmm. and uh, we have to uh, call uh, our publisher method uh, in connected callback and uh, we had to we have to create a pub, um, a method where from where we are publishing uh, our publisher okay so can we use multiple decor uh, decorators on one property no we can't we can use uh, only one Okay, so what do you mean by this? Uh, cacheable equals to true. Uh, cacheable equal to true. Uh, stores uh, the value. Uh, uh, stores. I don't know. You must have used this in your methods, right? Many of the time. Yeah. When working uh, on web or either on Aura. Yes. Yes. Uh, so. Uh, it stores uh, in it stores uh, in cache memory mm -hmm. that makes our component faster okay so can we perform dmls also on these methods no why uh, because uh, dml operations are not defined in the uh, documentation of uh, cache in in this type of method okay because it is not documented so we cannot use this yeah i had read something like this in okay so can you tell me the custom settings what are custom setting and what are the different types of custom settings we have uh, yeah uh, custom settings are just like of a custom object but we cannot create the tabs of our custom settings uh, or and uh, there are two types of uh, custom settings uh, we have uh, one of, one is hierarchical and uh, one is of list type and what is the difference between both uh, so hierarchical hierarchical refers to the uh, set, uh, custom settings which works uh, on hierarchical basis like who have created it uh, can see this uh, custom setting and on and uh, with users which are on higher roles can see this uh, uh, uh custom setting and whereas list uh, custom setting can be uh, uh, accessed by all the users okay so have you ever used this hierarchical in your uh, any of the projects or no, any no. of the requirement I, i have only used custom metadata okay why you used uh, why or why we go with metadata instead uh, of custom setting because custom setting is not deployable and custom metadata is deployable 
any other point uh, and uh, there are more type of fields available in uh, customator than custom so what is mixed dml uh, mixed dml is a type of exception which we get when both uh, setup and non setup uh, dml operation dml operation is to be done in simple and how we can avoid this by using a future method and in test classes in test classes we can uh, create one uh, in the uh, our setup method and another uh, object in uh, another uh, another method, normal method, test method so you are saying two different methods we have to create no no uh, one is setup method mm -hmm. and one uh, from where we are calling our main class any other way sorry any other option any other option we can make a data factory class so if we make yeah. data factory also okay yeah. so in this case do you think it will going to resolve the mixed dml i'm not sure okay so in the test classes why do we use test to stop test and test to start test uh, we use this both uh, to get New govern governor limits every time. Okay, what are the best practices to write a trigger? Okay, so there may be many uh, best practices, like uh, one trigger, one trigger for one object, and avoid DML and SQL, SQL query and SSL, SOSL queries and for loop, and uh, uh, avoid uh, hard coded uh, IDs and. Uh, Bulkified trigger should be bulkified. Okay, so how we can avoid this hard coded IDs? What are the options we have? Simply, we can fetch the uh, reports in our method. So for this, we have to make the query, right? Yeah. Okay. Query. Have you worked on flows also? Um. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. I created two, three flows. Okay. How many types of flows we have? Uh, we have five types of flows: mm -hmm. uh, record trigger, auto launch, uh, platform event, and uh, spin flow. And one more flow is there: platform event trigger flow. Okay. So, what do you prefer, either to go with flows or to go with triggers? We can go either of both, but uh, uh, I always prefer. Uh, to go with trigger as a developer as you are developer yeah and i have good of good hands on triggers also and so i prefer to but we can use both uh, so can you can you tell me any points in which you think that it is better to go with trigger instead of flows yeah there may be uh, some cases like uh, flow do not support uh, after undelete operation one maybe this case and we should use we we can use a trigger or flow where we have a complex situation or conditions uh, so that uh, it can be easy to handle the uh, okay so here uh, what is batch apex uh, so we use batch apex where we have to use uh, uh, we have to operate on more than 50000 records mm -hmm. What are the different methods and in the interface? There are three methods. One is start, execute, and okay. So let's suppose I have five hundred records. Okay. And the batch size is two hundred. Okay. How many times this will going to execute? Three times. Uh, start method will be executed once. And finish method also will be executed once, and uh, execute method will be executed thrice. Okay. What if I want to call another batch from what? this? Uh, we can call, but from uh, finish method only. Not from start and execute. Execute. Okay. So now, can we call future method from this batch apex? 
future from i think we can uh, call from uh, finish method only so you so we can call right i'm not sure but uh, i think we can can we call future from future no we can't why uh, we will get uh, an exception that is async exception okay so uh, i want to make call outs from trigger can we do so no we can't so how we can achieve this we can achieve it by using a future method so we guys enjoyed this video and if still there is any doubt related to any question do let me know